Hello. Tonight's highway is a special one because today is a day on which we recall and honour all those who died for us in war. In this Remembrance Day programme, we remember especially all those who fought to preserve the England that we cherish, like this Suffolk churchyard. Suffolk is a county of contrasts, a county of wide open skies and agricultural expanses linked by the steeples of some of the finest churches in England. Churches watching over memorable villages like Kersey and the beautiful green at Cavendish. And when, as Remembrance Day approaches, the winds of autumn get up to shake the leaves off the trees, even the river valleys feel open and exposed. These open areas have helped make Suffolk an ideal place for the Royal Air Force. There are several stations, like this one at RAF Wattisham, which have become villages in their own right. Communities of people living on the Suffolk landscape who are dedicated to its defence. Here, it's not the church which dominates the skyline, but the control tower and the phantoms of war are still reaching for the sky. During the Second World War, many thousands of men and women served in East Anglia in the Royal Air Force and the United States Army Air Force in the defense of this country. Many died, possibly thinking of their families and of beautiful little villages like this, Polstead. Thanks to those who did fight and to their successors who watch over them today, these villages are at peace. So the relations and descendants of those who did die can now go about their daily business with a feeling of security. That's why it is right that we set aside one day each year spending that little time reflecting upon those who were prepared to die for this peace. Each town and village had its own memorial to those they will never see again. I visited one of them in the village of Holbrook. You must be Peter Page, right? Yes, that's right, sir. They told me I found you here. Now, why are you looking after the garden here? Well, somebody has to do it, but I really do it for the names of the men that's on that war memorial. And as I work round here, I think of those men and if it hadn't have been for those men gave their lives for us, we wouldn't be here today to enjoy this beautiful village, would we now? No, oh, indeed, very true. And now you had a son in the <coughs> Falklands conflict, is that right? Uh, yes, my son uh, is in the Royal Navy and he was on one of those uh, 42 type destroyers that were down there. Uh, they'd already sunk the Sheffield, one of the six destroyers there. And then it came out on the news one tea time that another destroyer had been sunk. And uh, I was working away, chroming in, in the garden where I work. And funny enough, I chromed out a, a stone, which I call a, a lucky stone. And um, I picked it up and there's an old nail on the wall. And I went across there and I hung the stone on the wall and I said, please Lord, bring my son back. And lo and behold, when I went home that lunchtime, it was announced on the news that it was the Coventry that had been sunk and not the Glasgow. And I should always think that I'd got someone up there answering my prayer. And of course my son did come back. Peter, like many fortunate people in Britain now, has never seen war. But both his uncle and his son went away to fight for the freedom that we sometimes take for granted today. That's why it was that in the shadow of Holbrook Church, I met him again at a ceremony which will have been repeated today in almost every town and village throughout the land. The annual service of remembrance. Let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country in war, those whom we knew and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of mankind. Frank Bowles, Rupert Bug, Albert Burroughs, Charles Codling, Stanley Dale, Frederick Davis, George Dunnett, Thomas Harry Thomas Ling, Thomas William Lupet. Wilfred Smith, Patrick Stewart, K. 
Kenneth Wallington. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. <laughs> It's at this moment each year when probably every man, woman and child thinks of someone they knew or knew of who went away and never came back. Men like that uncle of Peter Page's, an ordinary horseman ploughing the land when he received his call-up papers for the first war. So like the men in the poem by A. E. Houseman, the lads in their hundreds, which was set to music by George Butterworth, who was himself killed in the first Battle of the Somme in 1916. The lads in their hundreds to lot will come in for the fair. There's men from the barn and the forge and the mill and the ore and never So I travelled to Shotley War Cemetery, overlooking the stretch of water from which the ships went out to fire the first shots of the First World War. From that very battle, not just English, but German dead also came back, enemies who ended up lying side by side. And it was here that I met Joe Brooks, once the rector of nearby Holbrook, and his wife, Margrid. Um, to me, Remembrance Day means thinking about people who were close to me and who have suffered or have lost their life through war. But because I now uh, attend Remembrance Day services in, in this country, it has become to mean more than that uh, because I can understand the people here and their feelings because of my own experiences and I think that has brought us closer together. My remembrance tide begins ten years in fact before I was born. Um, Joseph Spence who was a soldier in the First World War was the war lead to a better world then those who die do not die in vain. It takes people like Joe Brooks to grasp the opportunity given to them by those whom we honour today and to develop it into their everyday lives. It was this feeling that war must lead to a better world that gave rise to one of the most popular war songs of all time. Here's Gay Soper to sing it. The young have always been the people in whom the older and the wiser have invested their hope for the future. The Royal Hospital School in Holbrook moved here from Greenwich. This was the place which the Royal Navy originally dedicated to the education of its young. Happily, the school now takes in a broader spectrum of boys. I'd like to end this program in which we honour the men of yesterday with the help of the men of tomorrow. The boys of the Royal Hospital School, 
Together we sing, The day thou gavest, Lord, is ended. That brings us to the end of this Remembrance Day Highway, a day in which all of us remember with honor and dignity those whom we lost in war. Next week, Highway goes north to possibly the most beautiful part of this beautiful island of ours, Windermere and Grassmere in the Lake District. I'll see you then. Mm -hmm.